So hello and welcome to a special edition of Director's Notes Industry Interviews, where I am joined by Stephanie Charmail, who works as the head of production at Shorts TV, which is the leading worldwide catalog of short films. So thank you so much for being um, here to talk with us today. Hi, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Can you start by telling me a little bit about yourself and how you came to be involved with Shorts TV? Yes, so uh, originally, so I mean, I could go way far back with that, but um, I came to the UK to finish my master's degree and then started working in the film industry uh, a bit by chance, which I know people get angry about, but uh, I wasn't necessarily seeking to work in the industry and got runner's job, then became production manager. And for a few years, I was production manager and line producer on on, um, independent feature films in the UK. Um, and I think for about 10 years, and then I saw the opportunity at Shorts TV and I was like, oh, wow, an in-house um, position that seemed to fulfill everything I was looking for, which was very exciting for me uh, and working with short films, which I think are very, very exciting. Um, and then I got started and they work with the Oscar short films every year, which was a big draw as well. And so you work as a head of production at the company. Can you sort of break this down and perhaps explain your role at the company? Yes, so it's a small company, so I'm also very aware that my role might encompass a lot more things than, you know, the average, the usual head of production definition. So I'm in charge of um, all the productions for all the channels and all the assets, whether it's on air or online, uh, graphics and videos. We also uh, produce some uh, documentary style shows about festivals. So we travel a lot to film festivals around the world uh, to follow short filmmakers on their whole journey from nomination to awards. Um, And then we do documentary interviewing festival directors, curators, programmers, just to kind of give the audience a bit of a behind the scenes look, because that's such a a bit of a, how do you say, like a a mystique around this industry, sometimes this myth that, you know, it's all red carpet and gowns and my God, it's not. Um, So going behind the scenes at festival is always very interesting to really actually see the industry side of it, the hard work that goes on. So we make a, we make quite a few documentaries about the biggest festivals around the world, which is very insightful. Um, and I also organize like pitch competitions and mentoring initiatives that we've done around the world, again, in partnership with film festivals. So a lot of it is for the channels and on air, but a lot of it I do is also almost like events and initiatives and partnerships with festivals uh, to work with filmmakers in different countries. And which kind of festivals do you work with? Is it like the big festivals in Europe, like Cannes and Berlin, or is there also specific short film festivals as well? So we've worked a lot specifically with short film festivals uh, in Europe and around the world, but then we work also with Cannes. Uh, Last year, we did a big partnership with uh, IFI in Goa for the first time, which we're going to repeat this year. And we've worked with uh, festivals in Chile, in Colombia, Mexico, Argentina, in the US. We work with the Oscars every year. I know it's not a festival, but we work with the Oscars every year. Um, And in the UK, we work with like a smaller festivals but also the big like UK Asian film festivals the BFI so yeah very varied and then for example we go to Netherlands and we work with like Leuven and other short film festivals which are big in short films but not necessarily uh, super famous to the average audience. And do you feel that with short it's a kind of a different world to that that people might expect from film festivals with like the red carpet because I've met a lot of short filmmakers at festivals and sometimes it's a bit it's a bit prosaic and it can be kind of as if nothing's really happening when you're there as well. So it's it's not quite what people might imagine. Have you found that yourself meeting short filmmakers at these kind of festivals? Yes. I mean, to me, there's a big um, almost lack of education because with short filmmakers, very often you make a short film, if, especially if it's your first one, and you don't necessarily have a long term vision of where this is going to take you. And, and you think it might just be a proof of concept or an extract from a bigger project. A lot of short filmmakers don't always make short films to just make a short film. So I feel like the awareness of what's supposed to happen after is quite small. Mm -hmm. So often they go to film festivals and it's very much like, ooh, what's happening now? And they don't always capitalize on the opportunity that actually is being at a film festivals in terms of industry meetings and, and really making the most of that. So yes, I've been to very small film festivals where... But often, actually, the small ones are the ones where you make the best connections because people are a lot more approachable um, without the glitz and glamour. And I think that's usually a bonus. But I've been to an amazing one. And I've been to Clermont-Ferrand, which is fantastic Mm -hmm. as a filmmaker, actually, not uh, with Shorts TV. And that was a great experience. One of the best ones I've been to with Shorts TV was Bogo Shorts in Bogota in Colombia. 
It's 100% short films. It's a big festival. It's been going on for, I can't remember the number of years, but like over 20 years, I think. And it's incredible. The whole university uh, area of Bogota, because it's during their summer holidays there, so in December, is transformed to accommodate short filmmakers. There's screenings, there's food pairing events with short films, there's music, there's barbecues, there's masterclasses, meetings, pitching, networking. It's absolutely incredible. And the energy there is just fantastic. Like that's, yeah, that's one of the best ones I've been to. And it really makes you feel like, oh, wow, as a short filmmaker, some people realize you're important and what you do matters. I think that's really cool. What would your tips be for a short filmmaker, say at a film festival like, like Cannes or Berlin, for example, where you are sort of an afterthought to the main event. Like, what would you what would you recommend them to do to sort of stand out and get people to actually see the short, especially if there's big name draws that may distract their attention? Yeah, I mean, for that, I would say you know, it's like most things in in life and works research. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you if you know in quite in advance you're going. Trans, usually it's available once you've got accreditation, you can see who's attending um, or via LinkedIn or other avenues, you can see who is turning up at Cannes or Berlinale or any other big festivals and, and just see who's attending, see wh- who's giving a masterclass, who's being on panels and then just approach them and just either send an invitation or just send a hi, can I meet you for a coffee, try and get a meeting. Um, you might not get a response. You might. It's one of those things that are completely unpredictable. But if you don't ask, you're for sure not going to get. So a lot of it, I'd say, is in the preparation. But also be realistic. Don't necessarily think, oh, I've got a short film. Spielberg is coming. Let me get a meeting with Spielberg. Mm-hmm. Be, you know, target something very realistic. So also aim as much as if you've got a short film that's horror, don't contact, you know, comedy programmers. It's all about that as well. It's really targeted research. It's who is interesting, not necessarily to make you the next Hollywood director, because come on, this might not just happen right now, Mm -hmm. but also who can just be useful on the next step to become that whoever you want to be. You know, it's all about incremental steps. And I think it's the same as well with networking. It's just see who is your who is in your arena, who is going to give you the time of the day, but you're going to benefit from as well. And then just go from there, because the more you meet people, the more you will meet people. And then, yes, at some point you might get to that big hotshot person you wanted to. But it's not just about that one person. I think it's also being really realistic that there are thousands of people in the industry that can help you and recommend you and, and be beneficial for you without being the big names that you think they are. So mm-hmm. everybody's got experience. Everybody's got a job that matters and fits somehow in the matrix. And I think any of that is just soak it in. Like any knowledge, any meetings you can do at festivals or networking events or whatever, none of it is wasted, I think. And talking of like very high visibility i'd love to ask you a bit about having the oscars on shorts tv because it seems to me that shorts that are oscar nominated seem to get a lot more traffic i have a much longer afterlife than shorts on festivals or online premieres or that kind of thing so have you seen a significant difference in shorts tv towards the oscar program compared to other short programs 100 mm-hmm. percent uh, even our viewing figures go much much higher in february or march depending on when the oscars are when we show the the oscar shorts from the previous years it, it makes a big 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 draw it's it's marketing it's just it goes with the name you you, th- you hear oscars even for feature films you hear oh this is nominated or has won an oscar people get curious automatically because of the name oscar even before knowing about the film um so yeah it's it's a big draw and there there's no you know it's not always the best films i mean the films are excellent but like everything, it's it's also very subjective. So it's usually a very well fi- well made film. It doesn't mean it's going to be your favorite film of the year. It doesn't mean it's the five best film that were done that year in the world either. It's mm-hmm. just the five best fi- best film judged by you know human people with tastes and preferences um, that happen to watch those films. So it's not everybody in the country who watched them either. Also happen to have been forewalled or have won a uh, festival that credits them. So they, you know, there's a lot of steps as well. People don't just get nominated uh, for the Oscar by magic. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, in terms of audience, it makes a big difference, and that's just about awareness. The brand Oscar brand is a huge brand, and it draws a lot of interest. Yeah, I find myself watching films I probably wouldn't otherwise watch just because they were nominated for an Oscar, just to say like, oh, I've seen this one as well. So I yeah, think- yeah understand that but talking about making films you've also produced films yourself like Bazi yes. Daga and uh, Baghead so what did you yes. learn from the experience of making short films and how does that feed into your sort of current role at Shorts TV? Um, 
I'd say both roles are kind of very different because I was line producing and producing before and I've kind of done it through that. Um, to me, Bazi Gaga was an actual, it was a 100% love and passion and body and soul uh, piece of work for me. It was, you know, it was with my best friend who's the writer, director, and we we met as colleague and then friend and then she, I worked on, on the film. And it was such an important story that became very personal because of her experience, because of experience of people who've worked on the film. I've since then been to Rwanda and been able to meet people and see it for myself. That it it was just so much more than a film for us, you know. Mm-hmm. And and that's why I seek when I that's why I want when I seek for for projects to to work on. I just need something that's going to really drive me and not just something to say, oh yeah, I've produced a short film because I don't really care mm-hmm. for just another line on IMDb or whatever, like. It's going to take so much time, so much of my life, so much of my energy that I need it to mean something to me, hundred mm-hmm. <laughs> percent. So, so it's completely different. I mean, it's I'd say the experience on, on working on on films make me a lot more um, attuned to what I do at Short TV because I work with a lot of filmmakers, so I can bring a lot of my own experience outside of Short TV to what I do at Short TV when I meet people and do mentoring initiatives and things like that. And then all the work I do meeting, I've met, I don't know how many filmmakers I've met, but in the hundreds that I've spoken to and interviewed and uh, and worked with. And I learned from them as well, because everybody's got a story of what they learned on set and they should have done or shouldn't have done or a lesson or something, you know, that they've grown with the project that I meet them to talk about. So, so I've learned from that as well. I think Short TV has been the best film school I could ever have wished for. And I've never been to film school. But I've I've spoken to so many people that it's been a really really rich experience. And how does it exactly work when you look for short films on the program? Because of course it is a twenty four seven TV channel as well. Do you do you actively look for new films, or do you also take like submissions, or you're at festivals looking for films? Like, what's the process like? All of the above. Uh, so we've got a, a director of programming, Jade, who's absolutely amazing. She comes from like, I think. 15 years at Sky, like launching uh, films and channels with them. And uh, she, well, basically there's a curating, a curation team, there's a programming team and there's an acquisition team. So in terms of acquisition, you can submit your film as well through the website, but they also go to festivals uh, every year to a lot of the major film festivals for short films, watch short films, meet filmmakers and acquire this way. And then in terms of when you tune in, everything is programmed by blocks of an hour or two hours, uh, and then according to genre or themes. So that's not something I have anything to do with. But um, it's, for example, you might have an hour of comedy or an hour of crime or an hour of uh, awards films or an hour of, I don't know, French films, and then an hour of films by female filmmakers. So there's very different themes and ways of, because otherwise, because when you watch like a, I mean, I don't, I don't know if many people watch TV channels anymore, but when you do, if it's a feature film channel, you you have an ad break, but then you know there's a feature film and you might have heard of the feature film before, you know the star, there's a lot of common ground that you know that keeps you like in tune with that channel. Mm-hmm. For short TV, uh, usually the title of a short film is not going to draw you because you will never have heard of it. There might be a star, but very, very often there isn't a star. And also they can finish every, some of three minutes, some of 10 minutes. You might have an ad break very, very often. So there's so many opportunities for the viewer to, to flick the channel. So it's all also about giving coherence to the programming and trying to be sensitive and sensible about how, even within an hour of comedy, for example, what films are there within that in terms of duration, in terms of topic, in terms mm-hmm. of style, everything. So that there's coherence, uh, because it's quite hard to jump from one story to another, you know, like it it takes a lot emotionally as well. It's like finishing a book and starting another one straight away. You need a bit of a <laughs> breathing space sometimes. Yeah, it's interesting because on German TV, that if they show like Beverly Hills Cop, then the next film they're going to show is going to be Beverly Hills Cop 2. And then oh, yeah. Three. So you kind of know that if you start with one film, it's the easiest possible transition to go on to the next film, the next film, because it's yeah. the same actor. It's almost the same story. And it's, it seems a lot easier in that respect, but with shorts, you really have to think of a way to keep people invested, right? Definitely, definitely. And and also because we have credits potentially every 10 minutes, end mm-hmm. credits, and audiences don't like end credits. As a filmmaker, I love end credits, and I think mm-hmm. they need to be respected and shown all the time and not sped up and all that stuff. But reality is that it's all, you know, it's an advertisement world. Like, it's the advertisers that also decide mm-hmm. that they need to make their money depending on your audience. So, yeah, there's a lot of uh, things you have to contend with. 
And also talking about curation and programming, you're also the deputy festival director at Kingston Film Festival, which is just uh, just south of me in Wimbledon. So I'd love to know more about what this festival focuses on and, and your role there. So basically, it's the, only the second edition that finished, was it two weeks ago now, I think? Uh-huh. And uh, so a brand new, brand new festival with huge ambitions. And it's all about emerging filmmakers and new voices and uh, but with big potential. So even the first for the first and second edition, we went really big. We had three venues. We had partnership with Odeon and Curzon and there was theater in uh, Kingston. Uh, try to involve as much of the local population as possible. And then we had, uh, the first year we had 100 films, this year we had a little bit less, and um, short films features, trying to package them together as well to introduce people to different, um, well, different art form and also just different stories and different voices. Uh-huh. And we've had great sponsors and partners, and it, it's been really, really interesting. I mean, for me, it was... Uh, the first year I, I was just helping with setting everything in place and I, I was in panels and doing curation. This year I did a bit less because of, I was we were nominated for a BAFTA earlier this year, so that kind of yeah. made me a bit busy. Uh, but uh, still supporting the festival and just being really, yeah, at panels and recommending filmmakers and organizing all the networking events and that kind of stuff. And I recently read that only around 30% of short films have distribution. So maybe the easy part sometimes is making the film and getting in a festival. But then then there's that other step of like, okay, how am I actually going to make money from from this short film? And it is possible in, in a certain respect when you do have distribution. So what are your tips towards a filmmaker to make sure that that film has a life after a film festival? So a life or a financial life? But both, I guess, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, well, first of all, I think not all films necessarily need to go to film festivals. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think that's something that really needs, like when I talk to filmmakers, it's it's always about really trying to understand that it's the film industry. And that word industry is a big word because it's about the business of it. Because if it's a hobby, make your film, show it to your parents and bam, you're done, you've made your film. If you want to make it, as a viable option for your future and a career, then you need to take it seriously as a whole wholesome business. So even if you're the writer or the director and you think, oh, well, I don't do distribution, you need to know about this thing. You don't need to be a specialist about it, but you need to understand because it's like creating any product, whether you create a chair or, or whatever, you need to know there's an audience for it. You need to know people are gonna buy it. It's the same for a film. And it might not be necessarily with financial remuneration for a short film, but you need to know there's people out there for whom this is going to be a film that they want to see. Mm-hmm. And and festivals is not always the best strategy for a film. It might be, it might not be, because also usually it costs money to enter film festivals. And then if you get selected, do you travel to the film festival? Do you pay for it? What are you going to use that for? Is it just for your film to be seen? Is it for you to choose maybe just four or five festival that you think, okay, if I get selected to those, I will go, I will invest the money and go, but I will use those as networking opportunities and this is my goal. Like, I think things need to be really clarified from very early on about the film and its its life once it's made, because it's not just once it's done that you need to think about it, it's, it's from before. And the vision, the creative vision also fits with the business vision. And mm-hmm. I think there's no, we're in an industry where producing and not just producing you also need to be creative and if you're creative you also need to have like a mindset that's more business I think that's really really important and I think that's what lacks a lot but um once you figure that out mm-hmm. I think if it's if it's more about vision and, and just putting your film out there there's so many avenues yes there's a few distribution platforms like ours but that's not all there is there's great online platforms as well there's also you can do university tour you can do screenings in your cities depending on who your your audience is i think it's trying to find creative ways of how do you access those audiences you know and and, and all that is part of being a filmmaker and and i know it might not be what we all signed up for but it's very very important especially at the level of short films when you get to do big features somebody else is thinking about that yeah. when you do a short i think you really need to take that into account and um and then in terms of monetizing, yeah, there's just different platforms, but I would never make a short thinking, I'm going to become rich from this. Um, I don't think anybody becomes rich from making short films unless you live in Europe. Uh, mm-hmm. In certain countries, there's amazing incentives and companies can survive on and maybe thrive off making short films because of all the government helps that there is. 
and of the broadcasters. But I mean, in the UK, it's not possible. So I was going to actually ask about that because I I do know that in in Paris and other parts of France there are production companies that exclusively make short films and they are actually profitable from just making short films. Is this something that that the UK can like learn from? Because people sometimes look at France and obviously France has its own problems perhaps with films, but it there does seem to be a healthier attitude towards all types of movies in France. Do you find that? Hundred um, percent. I I feel like I was on a panel recently and I was thinking to me. One of the big things is that I feel there is no pride and appreciation of arts and culture in the UK. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't mean from like necessary audiences, but from the government. It's always an afterthought. If it's a thought, it's an afterthought. At the moment, it's not even a thought. And and I think that's a real shame. And all that trickles down through everything because there's no pressure or demands on broadcasters to invest in short films. And then, you know, and then all that has a knock on effect on uh, on budgets available and funding opportunities. Like in France, the main broadcaster has a slot every week. And I think it's several times a week. It's late at night, it's like 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. But uh-huh. they show short films. So they pre-buy short films based on the script. Yeah. And they pay per page the minute that of the airtime that it takes them to save the airtime. And it's incredible because you, you can get a really decent amount of money to make a decent short films where you pay people imagine that <laughs> you pay people a decent yeah. rate to work on your short films and and it's excellent and they do the same in belgium i think in spain there's similar things as well in france you have the the cnc which is like the big national group for it's a bit like the bfi but mm-hmm. uh but they actually have a lot of money and and they give at the national level also each region has their pot of money and then there's incentive if you get a broadcast deal, you can then unlock more. It's a bit like a video game. You unlock then yeah. more opportunities for funding. Level. It's fantastic. And when I first was looking into it, I was like, this is crazy because I was working here and in the UK where there's absolutely nothing like this. But in France, they're just like, well, this is totally normal. Of course we do this. So it's like the shift is very, very interesting. And I think here it's missing massively because you see it in the kind of the slow death at the moment of the independent British film industry um because there's just no money there's no incentive there's no nothing i don't know if it, we need to look at quotas or what but there needs to be incentive for companies to take short films seriously because a lot of the big broadcasters and big streamers are all allegedly about new voices but nobody's giving money to those new voices to actually really be a new voice not a voice that's already won 10 awards mm-hmm. and that you feel like you've discovered you haven't discovered anything um so yeah, I, th- I think there's a, a lot of work to do here. It's possible, I, but it's definitely not the government's priority right now. So you think it will require maybe some mass lobbying of the government to to rethink the way they they fund the arts and to make like a special category for funding short films in addition to to features? Because I know there's obviously BFI network, but I think after that there's no like extra level for sh- short film. Production. That's the thing. I mean, there yeah, there are some places where you can get pots of money here but um i think in the uk it's more if you want to do like a, a, a five a, a zero budget or like up to five grand or ten grand you can gather the money and crowdfunding and stuff like that's great of course um but th- there should be and also i mean in france i'm saying like it's the holy grail it's not because obviously a lot of films don't get made either because it's very mm-hmm. competitive and mm-hmm. and there's a lot of people you know fighting to get on those uh broadcasters list to kind of get the money but um I think here it needs to be kind of rethought and even the education about short film, what is a short film? In France, most people know what a court-métrage is. Even if you're not in the film industry, you you can't, you can't know what it is. Here, a lot of people don't even know what a short film is. All the clues in the name. Yeah, of course. But people just don't know what that is. And they think it might be something you've seen on YouTube. I mean, you might have seen one on YouTube, but it's not It's not the TikTok videos. It's very, very different. Um, so I think a lot of education needs to be brought on for audiences and filmmakers and everybody else about what short films are, what how much they can do. And now actually they are the key to reviving the industry and the emerging talent and the new voices that they all say they want to invest in. Um, and yeah, but the money. The money is the problem. So say if you are- Money is the problem. You, do, you have found out the budget to make a short film and you want to really make an impact with your short film. What would your advice be towards a filmmaker when making their like maybe their first short film or second or third short film to really stand out and, and make an impact with that short? Um, well, have the strongest strip that you possibly can have. 
Uh, and I'd say really spend time on the script, surround yourself with people, ask for advice, ask for someone, even if someone you've met at an event or whatever, can I just send it to you to read, not to ask for money or whatever, but just to give uh -huh. me pointers because you can always make it better. Always, always make it better. That, like, absolutely. So so I'd say start with the strongest script as possible and then the strongest team because regardless of how much money you have, um, surround yourself with people who know what they're doing and who follow your vision and are very keen because ultimately, you know, it's also about human connections and then on your next project, you might all work together again or with certain people or whatever. So I think that's really important. Uh, in terms of impact for the story, it really depends on the story. But um, if you focus on trying to make it as good as possible, because there's no point making it and it's going to be crap. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. if, if you know already you have to cut too many corners, there's cutting corners that then create creativity and that's yeah. a bonus. But also cutting corners are just going to make the film bad and then there's no point mm -hmm. because you're going to invest too much time and money to make something bad. I'd say <laughs> maybe not worth it. But um, otherwise, it's, it's really just maximizing the the tools that you have at hand, whether it's financial with teams or, or equipment and the actors and everything to make the best film that you can possibly have. And then be very realistic about what the film is and what avenues are there and what audiences are there to then strategize on whether it's festivals or private screenings or, or where you're sending your film or partnership with charities or, you know, there's so many or releasing it on YouTube or whatever, but then how are you going to, like, why do people need to see your film? Is it because it's a new technique? Is it because the subject's really important? Um, and, and then just go from there. But I'd say, you know, some people will make one short film and then just make it really big straight. It's a rare story. That's why it's mm -hmm. a story you hear because it's a rare one. Um, so, so to me, it's more about honing your craft and getting to know people and building a team and just strengthening your strength as a filmmaker as well. People that are sort of, taken on onto Shorts TV. What is the sort of value proposition for the filmmakers when they sign a deal with, with Shorts TV? Is there exclusivity involved, money? What's the exposure they can expect from the from the deal? What's what's the benefit for filmmakers to submit a film to Shorts TV and then be accepted? So uh, I'll tell you just what I know because there's an acquisition and legal team for that. So they would know the mm -hmm. rights and stuff, which I'm not, I don't know. But uh, very often, because also as a filmmaker, very often, being able to be bought by a broadcaster is a big deal for the investors or for the filmmakers. And then even just getting a, a document that says my film was bought by a broadcaster, it, it really helps for whether it's finishing funds or financing a new project or, or whatever. So that's, that's that's quite a big deal. And also, depending on the film, because um, we have channels in the US, Latin America, Europe and uh, South Asia. So depending on the film, it's either, either can go on all the channels or some are more, because of cultural... Um, sensibilities some are more focused or better in one territory or another so mm -hmm. that's the acquisition team that decides and the programming team that look at them and say okay this one is more for south asia or this one more from north america or all territories it's fine uh, so taking that into account so based on where your film is going to go on which channel then there's a minute rate uh that that is paid to the to the filmmakers but uh, i'd say in terms of exposure and just having a broadcast deal for because it's quite rare for short films uh, it's it's a good uh, good thing to have. And so, do you need to negotiate different deals for each territory, or is that global? Yeah. Deal? So basically, they, there's there's deals per territory, or depending if your film is going to be on one territory or all four territories, uh -huh. and and then we have more channels in one territory than others, etc. So it really is a, it's a it's a case by case scenario. It's really a film by film agreement. Okay, that's very interesting. Um, and so I wanted to also ask a bit about maybe the role because you you mentioned earlier that being in a festival isn't necessarily the best thing for a short film. And obviously there's online platforms as well, such as Director's Notes, which recently received a BIFA qualifying status as one of about eight yes, congratulations. platforms that have this status, which is really, really cool. So what do you think is, is the role of perhaps online platforms in order to create impact and maybe to have your, your debut there instead of at a film festival? Yeah, I think they're great. I think they're absolutely great. Again, I'd say it, it really depends on your film. And you see, if you think your film has festival potential, I'd say do that. Uh, because there's also something about seeing your film on the big screen with an audience. I mean, that's pretty special. But that doesn't mean you need to do 15 or 50 festivals even. Because a lot of festivals are scams as well. I mean, a lot of festivals, you know, kind of want to take your money and then there's never really anything happening. Or you just get a paper saying you're 
I know there's ways of getting laurels, but not yeah. all laurels are created equal. So, so for that, um, so yeah, so that's a, a one thing. I think online platforms are great because it's fantastic. Also, when you make a short film, to be able to say you can watch it here, because mm -hmm. very often it's like, oh, my film's at festival. Where can I watch it? No, you can't actually. Yeah. So, so there, there's something about you know doing it while it's hot, really, and being able to tell people this is where it's at, and especially like on, on your website, for example, there's amazing curation and with the articles and reviews that you do. Uh, which really take a deep, deep insight into the filmmaking and the film aspect. Um, I think those are really, really important. But again, I, I think it's really the filmmaker's motivation and um, strategy of where, what they want to do with their film that that needs to then dictate which way they go with it. But uh, otherwise, I think platforms like yours, especially yours, are amazing. Thank you. Um, I think it's also good when there's like an immediate response to something so like when lockdown happened i think we had films coming in like two weeks later of zoom and you're like this is this is quick and similar thing happened with the the war in ukraine suddenly we got films coming out very quickly and it's it's quite good to have that sudden impact as opposed to perhaps waiting three six seven eight nine yeah. months for for a festival for sure yeah completely because sometimes i mean a, a film can be in the festival circuit for up to two years or more yeah so, I mean, after a while, you just release it regardless of whether it's in festivals. But usually the first year, you kind of keep it locked in for festivals. It's a long time. Mm -hmm. And what are Shorts TV working on next in general? And maybe you can tell me what you are working on as a producer as well. Sure. So at Shorts TV, we're getting ready now for working uh, for the second year uh, in uh, Goa, the IFI festival uh, to do a, a mentoring and filmmaking competition uh, with the NFDC in India. So that's one of the big, uh, big projects. We also have partnership with UN Women uh, in Europe, where we co-curate programming and events uh, on the channel and live events with them. And uh, we're going to start soon looking at Oscars because we Oscar qualify films as well before the deadline of the end of September. And, uh, and then I have to start that every year. There's only a few months uh, of quiet, well, not quiet, just non-Oscar related months. Um, and then we kind of start, I think next month we're going to start. As a producer, I'm working uh, now on a documentary feature um, about uh, Venezuelan comedians in exile who've had to flee Venezuela uh, because of the lack of freedom of speech and uh, the role of comedy for audiences in exile, also comedian in exile and what they seek from that. Um, and I'm also working on a couple of short films that I'm trying to get off the ground and uh, see what happens with those. Cool, thank you so much. So this has been a special industry interview for Director's Notes and I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today. You're welcome. Thank you so much.